Good morning. It's a pleasure to welcome you here to worship at Trinity Lutheran Church. Thank you for coming and joining us as we gather for this first Sunday of Epiphany. Today, the star leads us to Christ revealing himself to us in his baptism. We often think, why, why does Christ need to be baptized? This man who knew no sin came and lived among us and was baptized into sin. He became sin for us so that today we can come and gather and baptize one another in remembrance of that, that he came for us. We're very excited to gather around this word and this meaning for us today and to spend this time and season of Epiphany gathering at all of the ways that Christ reveals himself to us. So welcome and thank you for joining us for worship. I invite you to please rise as you are able and we will join together in our confession and forgiveness, which can be found in your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the eternal voice from heaven, the anointed and beloved one, the spirit moving over the waters. As we approach the mystery of God, let us come in confession, trusting the love of Christ, crucified and risen. God who searches us and knows us, you have shown us what is good, but we have looked to other lights to find our way. We have not been just in our dealings with others. We have chosen revenge over mercy. We have promoted ourselves instead of walking humbly with you. With what shall we come before you? Forgive us our sin and show us your salvation in the face of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved of God, you have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit is from God, poured out for you in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Receive the promise of baptism. You are God's child. Your sins are forgiven. Rejoice and be glad, for yours is the reign of heaven. Amen. Let us join together in our gathering hymn, Crashing Waters at Creation, found on page 455. in the front of your red hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. 
for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray together our prayer of the day, which can be found on the top of your Celebrate insert. O God, our Father, at the baptism of Jesus, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful to their calling to be your daughters and sons and empower us all with your Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading for today is from Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison whose, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. The psalm today is Psalm 29. We will read it responsibly and do the refrain together. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. <clears throat> the 
the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in the lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The second reading is from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and his household. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how we went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. Today is taken from Matthew chapter 3, 13 to 17. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. I'd like you to um, sit down and uh, let's sing Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to whom belong, weak but we is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. 
Good morning. You can sit with them if you want to. Okay. How are you today? No, I am wondering. Um, there are so many things that we could talk about today. But I'm wondering, do you like superheroes? Can you name some superheroes from some movies? What are your superheroes? Do you know somebody? Can you name? Hmm? Supergirl. Supergirl. I think when we went to, uh, when Lex and I went to uh, Iron, Man. Iron Man, that is a really great superhero. I like him. How about Superman? Do you like Superman? Superwoman, Supergirl, somebody else? Do you know if somebody would ask you what do all those superheroes have in common? Do you have an answer to that? How would you explain to someone what those superheroes do? What do they do usually? They save the day, that's true. You know, there is great evil around them, right? And they save the day by um, doing things right, right? Did you know that um, this, is, this is exactly why Jesus came? In accordance to today's gospel, Jesus is our superhero. He's a superhero of all superheroes. Why? Because he saves the day. The gospel says he's here to bring righteousness. He saves the day. He uh, makes things right. Right? But even better, so what does it have to do with us? Um, we are supposed to be like Jesus. Right? And so in our own life, we are called to be superheroes. So how can you be a superhero in kindergarten, for instance, or in school? What does it mean to do things right in your own context? Be kind to people. Be kind to people. That is um, an incredible way how to become a superhero in God's kingdom, right? Um, or let's say you see that um, something has to be done at home, right? Maybe somebody has to clean up the kitchen or something like that. You could be a superhero and help, right? There are many, many things that you can do. But even if you fail being a superhero, I think you have to rem remember every day that Jesus loves you, right? That, that's why he came, and that you are a child of God. And so I'd like you to turn to each other, and maybe you can do the same thing, dads and daughters and whatever, or you can do it like this, and you turn to each other and do the same thing. Look here, I show you. See, you are God's child. You are God's child. Exactly, and you mark the, the other person with a cross. Can you do this? Can you do it to her or side with her? And say, you are God's child. And you too. Come on. Come on, like this. Exactly. Maybe you can do this too. Can I? You are God's child. Always remember that you are God's child. Can you do this with, with her? <coughs> Thank you, and I do it to you. You are God's child. Always remember that. Let's pray. Dear Father, I thank you for all the children who are here. I thank you for your love. I thank you for the parents um, who take their vows and that they made at their child's baptism seriously. And so I ask you, please help us define ourselves through your love and grace, always. Amen. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thanks for coming. <clears throat>
God's grace and peace to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When Paul, our son, uh, was little, and even with Lyme, one thing that we liked to do is to watch superhero movies. And by the way, I think superhero movies are a great way how families can spend um, some time doing those long, long um, winter months. I just changed the microphone because I think it's easier. Talking about superheroes, have you ever noticed that there is one thing that all those superheroes have in common? What is it? Well, all those superheroes, at least in my world, overcome great evil. How? By the destruction of the evil ones. And by doing so, and that's even more important, they establish righteousness and peace. Righteousness and peace. Dear friends, I mentioned those superheroes today because this is exactly the theme of today's lectionary. In accordance to our first lesson, the prophet Isaiah declared that the coming Messiah, who is Jesus, will establish justice and peace here on earth. Let me quote it one more time to you. In faithfulness, he, the Messiah, will bring forth justice or righteousness. Dear friends, justice or righteousness is a big word in today's lectionary. But it's also a really big word, an important word in the entire scripture. It's worth mentioning that in the scripture, the word righteousness and justice, at least in the Hebrew language, is the same sometimes. And it's also worth mentioning that the word righteousness or justice is mentioned 236 times in the scripture. And it's important to point out that almost half of the time this word righteousness is referred to the righteousness of God. That's really important because you and I are called to be righteous. And you and I know that we don't live up to this all the time, right? Because we are sinners. And that's why God sent Jesus to us to make things right. He does things that we couldn't do. It refers in almost half of the time to God's love, to his grace, to his saving activities and purpose. And this is the reason why it only makes sense why the main purpose of Jesus' coming in accordance to the, today's gospel is, is what? To bring justice and peace or, in today's words, to establish God's righteousness. That's the reason why Jesus came. Let me read it to you one more time. Let it be so now, Jesus says, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill what? All righteousness. The point I'm trying to make is this. The prophets were the amplifiers of God's justice. 
over and over they proclaimed that all people, and here's the emphasis, all people have to be treated right. All people have to be treated fairly. In accordance to the Hebrew prophets, our God is especially concerned for those people who are the most vulnerable among us, the most overlooked among us. Our God is especially concerned for those who are poor and weak, for those who are not important enough to be seen or heard in the council rooms of the most powerful. He's concerned for those who cannot afford a multi-million dollar lobby or defense team. He's concerned for those in our times who cannot represent themselves in Congress. 2,000 years ago, it was in court. It was a big thing. The poor people sometimes were taking advantage in court, in the court system. And there are quite a few prophets who had a real problem with that. You can easily make the case saying that justice is so central to the kind of society God wants that anything less would mean that we as God's people who are called to promote justice and peace do not live out our true identity in Christ. The prophets in the Old Testament would remind God's people over and over again that without justice, that's really interesting, God would turn a deaf ear on his own people. He would say, I want justice, I want righteousness, I am not interested in your sacrifices. It's like a pastor nowadays saying, I don't care about your offerings as long as you don't promote justice, which I find would go a little bit, I care personally. Thank you so much for your offerings, by the way. Thank you for supporting this church and this ministry. I care. But God sometimes said, I don't care about that. I'm more interested in your righteousness. It is in that spirit that the prophets proclaimed that all people in a righteous and just society, but particularly the poor, were to be given their share, their fair share, their most basic rights, which 2,000 years ago were food. For instance, the strangers, right, were provided with food. The Bible says that when you harvest your field, leave something for the people who walk by, for the stranger, so that they can eat. God, 2,000 years ago, wanted to make sure people are fed, people are clothed, people have housing, and most important, that there is due process, process in the court system. Nowadays, I would say you could expand that, extend that to the human rights, right? That we all should have access to health care or education or whatever you can think about. And that's the reason why in today's gospel, the baptism of Jesus is the occasion for God to announce that Jesus came to turn things right. Justice and righteousness will be established through God's Son. So that was really theoretical now, right? Now the question is, what does it mean for us? who follow Christ, 
who claim him to be our Lord and Savior. Well, in and through our baptism, we are invited to live and to promote right relationships. Just think about that. That's our call, right relationships. First with God, and secondly with one another. Our baptismal liturgy does pick up God's invitation to promote justice and peace when parents promise, and let me read that to you. Those are the promises that parents make. To live with their children among God's faithful people. That's the first promise. Second promise, to bring them to the, to what? To bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper. That's the second promise. The third promise is to teach them what? The Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Then the fourth promise, to place in their hands what? What do we place into their hands in the third graders? The Holy Scripture. And then the next, the last promise is to nurture them in faith and prayer. Those are all the promises. And now comes the purpose. Why do we do this? There are four purposes. That their children may learn to trust God. It's the first purpose. Second purpose, to proclaim Christ through word and deed. Third purpose, to care for others and the world God made. And here it comes, because we overlook that so many, many times. And I don't know any congregation who does that really well. At least not a congregation I served. To work for justice and peace. Just think about that. We are here theoretically to help you to become an instrument of God's justice and peace. And then we ask you, do you promise to help your children grow into Christian faith and life? And all of you said, yes, we do, right? I did never hear somebody saying something like, well, um, to work for justice and peace, uh, that's not my thing, right? Never heard anybody. So why do I mention that? I mention that because in baptism, we were all prod into a sacred relationship, a sacred relationship with Christ. It's a relationship that requires from us to strive for justice and peace for all in all the earth. And that has huge implications for us as a church body but also for us as individual Christians. For, exa for example, or for instance, since 500 years, we follow the example of our founder, Martin Luther, and we strongly believe that advocacy, advocacy is a strong expression of our faith. It's an expression of our baptismal identity. And this is the reason why the ELCA Churchwide Assembly, for instance, voted last fall, well, last August, that we are a sanctuary denomination. What does it mean? I know that some people have a problem with that term, right? What does it mean to be a sanctuary denomination? It means, well, it doesn't mean that we should do anything that is illegal, right? It's really important because people ask me, if you do something illegal, you may have my approval personally, but you are on your own, right? You are on your own. This is not our business. But nevertheless, within the legal boundaries, 
this church body publicly declared that walking alongside people like immigrants or refugees is a matter of faith. To declare ourselves a sanctuary church body is to say that we seek to provide concrete resources to assist the most vulnerable who are feeling the sharp edges of our broken existence. And by the way, it's not up on the pastor to decide how to do this, right? It's not up on the church body how to, how to do this. It's up on each individual and up on each congregation to decide how, they, how that may look like in your own context. It may look like that you support it financially somehow, right? You may support agencies who assist immigrants or refugees in a legal way. It may mean that one of you may connect with Voices of Peace in South Dakota and drive some people to the um, immigration court to Minneapolis. It may be possible that you think, right, that this is not my call, I don't want to have anything to do with that, and that's totally okay. But I think we have to understand, and that's the point, advocacy is a true identity marker of our church. If you pray right now, hopefully you do, for peace in the Middle East, then you promote peace. It's not a political issue. It is an expression of your faith. If you try to be a good steward, not only in the context of the church, but in the context of our environment, if you promote um, ecological policies, it's an expression of our faith. So the way how you do this, that's up on you. And I don't know about you, but I find that extremely liberating. I want to conclude by saying that Jesus came to, things, to make things right. How does he do it? He uses us, you and me. Do we fall short all the time? I do, right? But that doesn't matter, because Jesus came to even make me right and you right. So I hope that you will define yourself and others through God's love only, wherever you go and whatever you do. Amen. We are going to continue with the hymn of the day, I think, when Jesus came to Jordan, number 305, and please rise.
today for our milestone, we recognize all of the baptisms that we had, all 23 of them that we had in the year 2019. Um, the milestone item that our baptized will receive is the, we'll invite the families, when you come up, you can grab a faith chest, which has a few items that you will talk about during your education moment with Pastor Dirk at 1015 in the fireside room. And you will also get, um, every one of you has a dove with your name and the day that you were baptized that you will also receive. Um, all of those were displayed out by the north entrance here. There's that beautiful banner that Mary Lingbeck made for us last year. So every year now we um, place those doves there and we'll keep adding them this year and they'll receive it next year as well. So when I call the baptized names, we invite them to come forward with their family. They'll grab a chest, Lana will give them a dove, and please remain up here. We'll do a blessing with you before we head back to our seats. Amelia Lanning, Arlo Cook, McKenley Christensen, Theodore DeRosa, Reed Calise, William Clem, Mallory Kieran, Sophie Ellens, Connor Lanning, Eleanor Van Dyke, Sawyer Opsall, Grayson Olson, Solve, Celeste Tom Shaquin, Ella Clem, Crew Hall, Jasper Lanning, Rowdy Seitz, um, by Ada Haroldson, Katie Calise, Parker Allen Clem, Ava Jacobs, Owen Thuringer, and Jackson Wagmeister. <laughs> I just wanted to mention that um, after that educational uh, milestone stone that we've met, uh, please return to the sanctuary and just pick up one of those face chests. Um, in your case, I think it's two. Don't you have twins somewhere? No? No. They're not. <laughs> That's true. What? <laughs> no, I, I thought, I, I just mixed it up. I thought that somebody has twins, but uh, we don't have they twins. They do have twins, but... <laughs> but <laughs> yes. For every child, one face chest. That's my point. Yep. Thank you. Let us join together in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day that you have given us. We thank you so much for your blessing and your sacrament of holy baptism. We thank you for this time together with these families that we can remember and affirm those baptisms and remember that gift that you gave us and claiming us as your child that day. Let us dwell in those memories together and we thank you for that promise that continues all of the rest of our days. In your name we pray, amen. Yes, we'll invite families. Make sure you grab one of those and the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share God's peace with one another. Al invites us to be seated and we will have our ushers will collect our offering and the children are invited they can bring their offering to the front as well.
Please rise for the offertory. God of wonder, you have formed us in our mother's womb, and from Mother Earth you bring forth this bread and wine. We place them on your table together with our lives and all that you have made. Open the heavens to us and pour out your spirit. We wait for your mercy. We long for your peace. We hunger and thirst for Jesus Christ, our banquet of life. Amen. Called together through the water and the word, we boldly pray for the church, the world, and all who long to hear God's voice. Renewing God, thank you for the gift of baptism. Give your church boldness to proclaim your promises. Tear down obstacles of injustice so that your word of hope reaches the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, we rejoice in the glory of your creation, the beauty of rivers and streams, glaciers and oceans, lakes and ponds, bring restoration to your earth, and free us from overuse and abuse of water, air, and land. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, we give thanks for order in the midst of chaos, though we long for greater justice in our world. Raise up wise and compassionate servant leaders, so that all experience your reign of peace. We pray for the Middle East. We pray for our president and other political leaders. Give them wisdom so that they will bring reconciliation um, to this region. We also pray for our soldiers, for our servicemen and servicewomen. Keep them Save and protect them from all harm. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, thank you for the powerful healing we witness through doctors and nurses, medication, therapy, and holistic means. Break through clouds of pain and anguish with your voice of comfort. Proclaim hope to all who grieve and send healing to all who are sick, especially those that we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. God of courage, we rejoice in this community of hope. Strengthen all who are preparing for baptism and renew the faith of sponsors, mentors, parents, grandparents, friends, and all who guide the newly baptized in this life of joy. Lord, in your mercy. God of hope, unleash your spirit to increase our trust in you. We give thanks for the lives of the saints who inspire us to live with lives of baptismal witness. Lord, in your mercy. We place our prayers before you, God, united in your spirit, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May Christ, the wisdom of power of God and the source of our life together, keep you united in mind and purpose. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Please be seated for a few announcements. You, um, you probably noticed that um, 
Lexi and I moved away from each other. That was because we had some uh, technical issues, not because we don't get along with one another. <laughs> yes, during the prayers is when yeah. we take it out against each other. Exactly. <laughs> You might have noticed this in your bulletins, your take and bake order forms. Um, we have a group of high schoolers that are going on an inner city mission trip to Chicago this summer, and this is one of their fundraisers they're doing. So um, let us make your pizza for the Super Bowl. All you have to do is fill out this form, and it'll be ready for you to pick up after the 8.45 or 11 a.m. service that day of February 2nd. So you can take it home, choose your toppings. You can turn it in to me in the office during worship, whenever works for you. There's also a group of kids that are selling Valentine tickets um, in the Narthex. You could also leave them with them there. Um, come and join us for that Valentine's dinner. All proceeds for that also go to the group of kids that are going on that Chicago trip. So come and support them on that mission trip. Um, that's going to be on February 9th at 5.30 p.m. All are welcome to come and join us for that, families and friends. And it'll be a great time. Tony's is catering it similar to last year. Um, and there's a couple options for you to choose from for your pasta. So buy those tickets with the kids downstairs. I'd like to remind you that our annual meeting will be next Sunday after the second service, um, January 19th. Um, please pick up, if you didn't do so last week, the annual report. By now, we also have the financial statements out, so you can take that home. And you know, I don't know about you, I'd like to talk a little bit about it. Just think about, imagine you would fly an airplane with 1,000, 1,000 people, and all are pilots, and nobody knows what the other pilot is doing, would you get into that airplane? Probably not, right? Because you will never make it to the runway. In the last 20 years in ministry, I, I observed many times over and over again that at the end of the year, we came out pretty close to our expenses. Um, last year, that wasn't the case. We were pretty much behind. But this year, again, and I can never believe how that works, we are um, about 1,450 something dollars on the top of the game. Thank you for your support. But I think most thankful I am to God's grace because I cannot imagine that without God that wouldn't work. One, one uh, year, I think we were 40 something dollars on top of it. 40 something dollars. I don't know how you can do this with so many people who are with so many wheels. Thank you so much for your support, and um, you don't know what that means for us when we go into our annual meeting. Also with that, on the day of the annual meeting, there will be um, nursery attendants. I'm not sure if it's Allison or Bridget, but one of them will be there um, down in the nursery. So if you would like to attend, but you're not sure what to do with your kiddos, that space will be available as well. Camp Sunday is coming up on January 26th. It's hard to believe we're thinking about summer, but we're very excited thinking about opportunities to be going to Outlaw or Nisodak or going to um, Joy Ranch or our on-site options of VBS here and day camp. But you'll learn more about that as we get closer there, but we're very excited um, to be kicking that off. We are looking for, um, if you're a baker and would like to donate some treats for that coffee hour, we'll be doing it similar to last year, a big camp party down in the fellowship hall with all kinds of activities. So if you would like to donate some s'mores treats or any kind of bar, um, please sign up for that in the narthex so we make sure we have enough treats helping those service groups out. Do you have anything else? Yeah, check out your announcement sheets otherwise for other announcements. I invite you to please rise as you are able, and we will do our Sunday hymn songs of thankfulness and praise found on page 310. Um, children, if you would like to come to the front with ribbons, you're welcome to.
Shine. Also come back and bring Sir Bingo back. Shen Nu. Woohoo. Soup and fries and bingo. Thank you.